Rube, I know you don't normally like to talk about the weather. Can we talk about the weather a little bit? If, if it's important to you. It was nice today. It was beautiful. Maybe the nicest weather day we've ever had at training camp? I had the long sleeves on for most of practice. Me too. Yeah. Long sleeve team here. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a beautiful morning. It was a nice morning. A uh, relatively lengthy practice. Not super heavy. They were in shells and shorts. But uh, a lot of good work situational stuff today. Two-minute drill, four-minute drill. So, you know, that's kind of the, the backdrop of practice. So it changes a little bit of the observations. Yeah. Um, and I think the weather kind of, I don't know if Nick changes the length, the duration of practice based on the weather, but it's, it was a good day to go a little longer. Yeah. We Although this is average now. I mean, yeah. last year, 148 would have been, is that what you said? 148? 146. 146 would have been like the longest practice of the summer. Now it's right around the average. Yeah. The players are noticing too. Like yeah. they know they're getting more work and I think they like it. It seems like they do. Yeah. I asked Dallas about that yesterday. Got her. And he said they're all embracing it. They all know they need the work, and it's good for them. And, yeah, I, I certainly appreciate longer practices. Yeah, more chances I get to watch, I'm happier. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. We'll just get into it. Um, we'll start off with who did not practice today. Matt Hennessy, our Okwebenum, John Ross, Tyler Steen, Caden Stearns, and Johnny Wilson. Uh, these guys returned to practice. A lot of guys came back today. Now, it wasn't fully padded, so keep that in mind, but definitely some good signs in here. Gabe Hall, EJ Jenkins, Joseph Ngata, Moro Ojimo, uh, and Mekhi Becton, who left practice on Sunday with an undisclosed injury. He's back. He was in team drills. He looks okay. Yeah, and I think that's the big one. I mean, you want to see all these guys back, but that's a concern. when You're, you're starting already, right guard. He's learning how to play right guard. And you're already down Tyler Steen, who's out indefinitely. Uh, so, yeah, seeing uh, – uh, seeing Mackay Beck didn't come out for practice was definitely a good sign because it didn't look great. I mean, he didn't look great leaving. So good to see him back out there. Yeah, he he didn't take all the reps. I think he was on a pitch count a little bit today, but certainly good news that he was back in general. Uh, some other little notes here. Trevor Keegan left practice late, did not return. It did was, not I mean, look good. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say it was awful, but like he was limping a little bit. He was walking with the trainer. He's had a really good summer, so yeah. uh, hopefully that's nothing major. Saw Saquon Barkley getting like stretched out a little bit. He didn't like the last period of team reps. He was not in there, so um, I don't know what that is. But he would look like he's get like back getting stretched out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything to be alarmed about. And then so, uh, to keep an eye on. Yeah, and then didn't see Dallas Goddard or Josh Sweat in team drills. They they did everything else. I don't think that's something major. And if you hear a disturbance out there, it's Ricky Bo who just doesn't shut up. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it looks like uh, those guys looked fine, but they just weren't uh, weren't working, which is keep an eye on it, but it doesn't seem like anything serious. Yeah, uh, depth chart stuff, another Devin White, Zach Bond day, but typical stuff after that, mixing and matching, a bunch of different combinations. Rube, is there gonna be a point where they just like get two linebackers and like there has to be a point where they just do that, right? And you know, what's fascinating to me is like. Why was it the joint practice? Why was that the one day Nicobe got the first crack at first team reps? If you're in New England, you probably think he's a starter. He got all the he got the first set of reps up there, and he's been so good since then, and really before the week before then. I just I don't get it. I don't I don't know what what the thinking is there. I don't know what the logic is. Uh, he's our best linebacker. He's been their best line linebacker for a while now. I'd like to see him get reps with the ones whoever else is going to be out there with them. Yeah. I think at a certain point, like you got to get these guys as many reps together as possible. I know that Vic Fangio said that they wouldn't completely rule out the idea of a rotation, but it seems like he'd rather have two guys in there. I don't know. Like we're, we're less than three weeks away from the opener at a certain point. I, I think you just got to get all the reps to the guys who are going to be out there on September 6th. You would think so. And like you pointed out, like there's times where we'll see Devin White and Nicobe with the twos together. Which like that could that almost counts as first team reps if those are the guys. De facto reps, yeah. It really matters like those two guys together. Now certainly like the, the help on the back end, like all that stuff matters, but really they have to know how to play next to each other. Yep. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of confused about that. Yeah, the whole thing is baffling. Um 
I, I get that they like Zach Bond, and I don't think he's been bad other than maybe that first preseason game against the Ravens, but uh, Nicobe Dean's outplayed him. Yeah, I agree with that. Clearly. Uh, cornerbacks Slay and Quinion Mitchell started the day. They were in base, so that that's a good sign. I think that's going to be Quinion Mitchell's role. I think he's going to be the outside cornerback in their base package, which isn't even really base anymore. Like that's you know, yeah. n- nickel is the base, but uh, he'll play outside um, at first and then inside on the nickel reps, and then Isaiah Rogers replaced him on the outside. Do you agree with me? I think that's Quinion's role. I do too. And we've kind of suspected that for a while now that like he was getting like I, I think it makes sense to give him as many slot reps as possible because that's what he hasn't played. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's but he's still gonna play that more than outside. That's true. Because you're they're in nickel, you know, more than comfortably seventy percent. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that, but um I mean it does it, it to me it makes sense to 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 have Ringo and Isaiah Rogers get as many outside reps as possible. Do you think it's just going to be Isaiah Rogers? He's, I do. He's getting the reps to start every day, and Keeley mixes in, but it seems like they're kind of settling on Isaiah Rogers. It seems that way. What would you do? That's probably what I would do. Really? Yeah. I, I think they're close enough that I would lean toward the younger player. Really? Yeah. I think Keeley's looked fine. He's a little handsy at times. Yeah. I I think but I think there's a chance that next year he's a starter. I don't think there's a great chance Isaiah Rogers will start next year. They have to resign him. Yeah, I don't think they're really sitting here thinking about contracts though. Yeah, but my point is if it's close, I'd go with the younger player who has more time under contract here. I mean, I'm a big Keely Ringo fan. I, I just think everything's pointing to it being Rodgers. Yeah, I'm not talking about what they're doing. Yeah, I'm just no, trying I hear to figure out what I would do. If it was my call, I mean, I, I'm a big Keely Ringo fan. Uh, I think Isaiah Rodgers has been a little more consistent than him, probably. Um, he is he is a lot better as far as not picking up penalties. Mm-hmm. I think he will be. Um, but it's it's a good problem to have. Yeah, and I think there's also a chance that as the season goes on, Cooper Jean is like fully back. I think there's a chance that Quinion ends up just staying outside. And it's like, I think quietly in like week five, Cooper Jean might be the, the nickel. It could turn out that way. And it's, it's funny to talk about all these young D backs because they're good. It's usually not the case around here. Um, um, I'm fascinated to see how it all shakes out and what roles each guy has. Uh, yeah, it's a fun problem to have. And I think next year, you know, we're talking about next year. I mean, I don't I think Slay's gone and all these guys are playing. Going into last season, the top backup outside corner was Josh Job. The top backup nickel corner was Mario Goodrich. Yeah, Mario Goodrich now with the Giants. Josh Job is here, but not kind of borderline roster guy. I don't know how many corners you can keep. Eleven. <laughs> but they got some good ones. But uh, to go from that to most likely Keely Ringo. Yeah, now Josh Job's like their fifth best backup. Yeah, and Cooper DeGene is the, the top backups. Yeah. Or even, even you can even say Vontae Maddox. Even that's a better position. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing against Job. No, I, I think he's the same player. It's just the what's around him has changed. Yeah. Paris Campbell and Brian Covey still split those wide receiver three reps. No Johnny Wilson, no John Ross. That's the situation they're in there. They're in protocol. Concussion protocol, yeah. Uh, Lane Johnson and Mackay Becton did like half of the reps, and then they were replaced by Fred Johnson at right tackle. And then uh, it started the day Brett Toth getting right guard reps, and then it was Nick Gates, who's quietly climbing the depth chart. Quite, very quietly. <laughs> yeah. Have you yeah. thought about Nick Gates, though? I mean, that's kind of the sign of a decent guard. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, somebody's got to play those right those right guard snaps. Um I guess he's in the mix. I don't know if you need to keep him on the initial 53, but you're allowed veterans on the practice squad, and you, you, you might have elevations for these guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they like Tooth's versatility. He can play anywhere. Uh, Max Hennessy's in the mix, too, I guess. But, <laughs> no, he's actually not not in the mix. I wonder if the re- one of the reasons they were rotating, like got Lane out of there, got Beckton out of there, 
I have a feeling tomorrow's going to be like, like a big time two hour, 15 minute fully padded, like last practice of camp, like just really work them hard. And maybe, maybe that was a concession to what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Like back in the day, you used to have the third preseason of the four preseason games be like the, yeah. the dress rehearsal. Yeah. That might be tomorrow. Might practice. be tomorrow. Yeah. They already did the one scrimmage day on, uh, on Sunday, relatively intense, but. Yeah, you're right. They're ramping up today for something tomorrow. I feel like I feel like that's the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, without Goddard in team drills, we saw Grant Calcaterra and CJ Uzama in 12 personnel. Uh, EJ Jenkins in 13. Good to see him back on the field. We'll just go through. Well, first off, like overall today, I thought it was a pretty pretty even day. Yeah. In terms of offense versus defense, offense did some fun things. Offense did some fun things, but like in the the one two minute drill, the defense stopped them which was like the most competitive period of practice. And I thought the defensive line is really getting a lot of pressure these days. Yeah, from a lot of different guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with the big play of the day. Uh, you've heard this before, but... Spectacular. Yeah, A.J. Brown down the left sideline gets a step on Quinion Mitchell, and Jalen Hurts, it's the best ball he throws. I, it might be his best pass of the summer. It was spectacular. And it's funny because I had just moved from the sideline you were on with the right sideline offensive right sideline to to that corner of the end zone where that play went i just walked over there and that play came right at me and it was you know just spectacular watching the ball just settle right into aj's hands and it, it wasn't bad coverage by q um but he had no chance yeah it was a perfect throw and i when i said this is it's the best pass he throws i don't mean like that individual pass i mean just the go ball it's that's consistently been jalen Hurst's best pass in the nfl and AJ was in full stride and didn't have to break stride, didn't have to lunge, didn't have to speed up, didn't have to slow down. He just stayed in stride, and the ball just nestled right in his hands. He's got to work on his punting. He punted the ugly. ball in celebration. It wasn't great. He punted the ball in celebration. It went about six yards yeah. sideways. <laughs> it took a bad bounce. So this summer, that. we've now seen AJ Brown punt and kick field goals. Neither have been great. He might want to stick to being a receiver. He's pretty good at that. Yeah, I think that's probably a good a good decision. Q was pretty down on himself after that rep. I don't know if you kept an eye on him. A couple of the veterans came out and had a word with him. Um, it's going to happen. It's tough work against. And earlier in the practice, Devontae Smith got him. Yeah. It's yeah. It's you're going up against two of the best receivers in the league. You're going to lose. It's about like battling back from it. Reed Blankenship. We'll, we'll get into our interviews later, but. Reed was asked about um, about Quinion, and he said, "You know, Q is the type of kid where he could get beat three times in a row by AJ, but if he makes a play in the fourth one, he'll be trash talking." <laughs> so, I like that. Yeah, I like That's, that. I think in order to be a defensive back yeah. in the NFL, you have to be like that. Like you have to have a little bit of like extra confidence. That's not really warranted. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like Jalen Mills wagging his finger after a ball was overthrown 30 yards. When you, he was you beat need by a, 10 yards. Yeah, you need yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah, doesn't hurt. And really, Jalen Mills is like the Spalding guide example of that. Yeah. Yeah. He had the swagger of a first round <laughs> all pro. Uh, no interceptions from Hurts. He's gone 15 practices without one. How many, uh, how many passes? A million, I don't know. What do you make of all that? I, it's now become like we, we talked about it enough, I think. But. I think um, somebody could have had him today down, over the middle. Um, was it Keeley? Uh, he he just he just he missed somebody by like eight yards. You remember the play? I I don't. Uh, who who was he targeting? He was targeting. Um, I I. I jotted it down, but it was over the middle of the field, and he just, it was just a total botch play. He just threw to the to the wrong guy. He threw right to the D back. It was Keeley, and he dropped it. Okay, uh, it would that would have been that it would have ended the streak and sent uh, Elliot Short Parks into a deep depression. But uh, but no, he's been he's been and yeah, he's been sharp and he's throwing it down the field and being aggressive, and uh, it's been fun to watch. You know, we talk all the time about, like, who's really impressed you in camp. I mean, Jalen's been as impressive as anybody. Yeah, I th- and it's that's what you want. As much as we talk about, like, yeah, Patrick Johnson's having a great camp, that doesn't equal extra wins. You know, like, it's, right. it's about uh, the top guys, and he's looked really good. 
Let's finish up with the offensive stuff. Uh, Devonte had another good, like AJ had the big catch, but Devonte had one that was probably a higher degree of difficulty. He fought through contact from Keely Ringo, who was actually called for defensive pass interference in the end zone. Devonte fought through and still caught the ball for a touchdown. Yeah, I was in the left left corner, kind of the same spot where AJ caught his. It was hard to tell from where we were if he was in bounds. I give the benefit of the doubt to Devonte on the sideline. Yeah, that's fair. Um, he's they both have have just a great sense of getting those feet in bounds. But uh, it was that was a really nice catch tumbling down in the end zone. Keely right on top of him. Uh, it was it was a really sweet play. He had a he had a really good day today, Devonte. He's had a good day every day. Yeah, I mean, he much. no one can cover him. AJ said that earlier uh, in the summer, and it's kind of been true. There was one where he got Quinion Mitchell leaning a little bit to the outside. It's tough when you're not used to playing nickel corner, and all of a sudden you have to face these two way goes. Like you got a lot of space to cover, and if you're leaning the wrong way, you're going to get beat. And that's what happened here. Devonte had him leaning a little bit, uh, cut back inside, had a ton of space. It was a big gainer. So uh, we've seen. Quinion break up a few passes to Devontae, but yeah. over the last couple of practices, six is getting him. Yeah, he is. Uh, what else did I have from my offensive notes? Uh, saw Big Fred Johnson get downfield, and uh, he pancaked Eli Ricks like 15 yards downfield. He, he's looking for action. I like that when an offensive lineman is just looking for work. Yeah, and he's had a good summer, and he's, he's trying to make the team. I think he probably will make it, and uh, had a rough day on he, Sunday. He's a feisty guy. Yeah, he did. He did. But yeah, that was that was not really a fair fight. Uh, will Shipley has more explosion as a runner than I expected. You think? Yeah, I and he had some big holes to run through today, but he he has like decent burst through the line. I think of him as kind of like a pass catching change of pace guy. And realistically, that's what he's going to be for this team. Right. But I've been pleasantly surprised by just like his burst through the hole. Yeah, I'm I'm not sold on his running ability. I, I am sold on his receiving ability. Uh, we'll see. We'll yeah. He's not going. There's not going to be a lot of carries for him. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, I don't know if I'm sold on it, but uh, I'm, he's shown me more practice than I expected in that area. Okay. You don't you don't don't agree with that? I just haven't seen enough. Okay. Uh. That's all I had on offense, I think. Oh, no, you know, I have one more. Anaya Smith, yeah. uh, the fifth-round pick, he's starting to turn a corner a little bit. He's had some some plays. It's been good to see. He's kind of – Like nothing spectacular, right? but he's catching the ball when it comes to him, and that's just the first hurdle. Considering how bad things were going for him, just catching the ball is a big step. Yeah, he had one where Cooper DeGene playing nickel. I should have mentioned that earlier. He was mostly nickel with the second team, got some outside reps. Uh Looked like he took more snaps today than he did on Sunday, so they're ramping him up. But there was one play where Anaya Smith catches the ball. Cooper pops him pretty good, and Anaya holds on to the football. Yeah. And it's a play that – it's not spectacular. It's a play he doesn't make two weeks ago. You're right. You're right. And you give the kid credit for fighting through it. Maybe that uh, game-winning two-point conversion turned his season around, turned his career around. And we talked about this. I credit the coaching staff for getting in that. Sure. I think they've been trying to like help build his confidence up. It's all a confidence game, especially as a rookie yeah. in this league. Like you show up, it's moving too fast for you. You're making mental mistakes. You're 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 process you're taking too long the process. And I, I think that like you gotta find a way to get this kid in rhythm a little bit. Uh, I don't know. It's it'll be interesting to see what they do with him on the roster if he if he makes the fifty three or if I mean on merit he probably doesn't make it, but he is a fifth round pick. Yeah. He, he's a borderline guy. I'm guessing he won't. Um, he's not the kind of guy that's going to get claimed. Well, fifth round pick. Most likely won't get claimed, but uh, we'll see. Maybe. I think normally like you start to think about the sixth, seventh rounders as guys you can cut and sneak yeah. through, but fifth, fifth round is a, a little high for my liking to, to try to sneak a player through. Well, we will see. He's definitely on the bubble. Um, did you did you see AJ's catch? In, it was just in one-on-ones, but – I missed that. I was mostly watching O line D line. That was an impressive. Okay, there was a really impressive rep, um, where he, like, it looked like the ball was out of bounds. Looks like he was going to go out of bounds, and somehow he, he, you know, he caught the ball two feet out of bounds and somehow smacked his feet down in bounds. 
And look, it's just a one-on-one -on -one drill and a, another long summer practice, but just the attention to detail in his game and to make that play in that situation, nobody would have batted an eye if he just caught it out of bounds. And it was, it, it really kind of was a little glimpse into just how detailed he is, what a perfectionist he is. Uh, it just, you know, it meant so much to him to make that play. The only other rep I saw from receivers, DBs, was actually Nye Smith. He he had a nice route against Devontae Maddox, mm -hmm. got some separation. Yeah. Anything else from those one-on-ones? Not really. That was the highlight for me. It was just just getting to stand there and watch AJ Brown make plays is like you're like this is a, they pay me to watch AJ <laughs> Brown catch footballs at practice. It's incredible. He's so good. He might be the most underrated player on the team. <laughs> uh. I watched the like I mentioned. I watched the O line, D line, one on ones. Yeah, uh, Lane John, like the first team offensive line did a good job. After that, it was a lot of the defense winning, and these are kind of slanted towards the defense in these drills. But the first team offense did great. Lane Johnson shut down Nolan Smith. Mackay Becton is really good one on one against Jalen Carter. I did not expect that. I you'd expect to see Carter win most of these. Yeah. No, I, I think Becton is one more of them against Carter. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Cam Jurgens did a nice job against Jordan Davis, which is like it, it, he's just so much bigger than him, and he, he has this bull rush that if Cam slows him down, I give the win to Cam. Yeah. It's tough to really parse that. Uh, Trevor Keegan had a great rep against Milton Williams, getting him wide. Uh, Jordan Mailotti got a little his like arm up on Bryce Huff. It was a nice win by Huff. Uh, what else? Oh, Dylan McMahon. He impresses me in these drills. He went up against PJ Mustafer, who's got, I mean, how many pounds on 80. him? He stood him up. Yeah. I was really impressed by that. You have him on your 53? McMahon? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Both both rookie. Both uh, rookies, yeah. I mean, I, I think you don't want to cut picks anyway, but both of them have earned it. Yeah, I think so too. I think I think McMahon's pretty good. I think you know. I think they both have a chance to be pretty. I'd good. really like to see McMahon get those second team center reps. I don't get all the Brett Toth. Stout loves him some Brett Toth. Yeah, um, and he's been fine. Like I think Brett Toth has a chance to be on this team, but I think they'd be fine with Dylan McMahon being their backup center. It's fair, and I'd like to see him get those opportunities more. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> Watch the uh, the running backs go against linebackers a little bit. Back-to-back -back reps, I saw Kendall Millen and Will Shipley get open against their linebackers and then drop the pass. It's like they put so much work into getting open, you got to catch the ball after yeah. that. That's all I had from one-on-ones. Um, Jalen Carter had another maybe tackle for loss, maybe at the line, but it's back-to-back -back days getting in the backfield, stopping Saquon Barkley. That's a big part of Jalen Carter's game, and we talk about the pass rush all the time with Carter, but he's just as good against the run. And I like, I think that's going to show up this year. He's going to make big tackles for loss. Like I expect to see a, a big number in TFLs for him. Yeah. And I thought that was a part of his game that really, really struggled the last month. I thought his run defense was not good. I think there was like in general, like gap integrity problems yeah. last year. Yeah. So yeah, it's good to see. Uh, what else do I have on defense? Oh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson had a, a big hit on Grant Calcaterra in the middle of the field. I like that. I, I like a, when it's dud, don't you end touch. Like, get a get a pop on these guys. And you never know. You might knock the ball free. This time it didn't, but uh, I like that. And then, of course, he, he celebrated, but he had to get back to the deep post. So it was kind of funny watching him celebrate on the run. He, he, was, um, he was all hot and bothered on the sideline at one point. Um, he Sounds was, unlike him. He was screaming about one. I'm not going to use the word he used, but um, he thought some player on the offense was behaving unethically, <laughs> and he wanted to go out there. And, <laughs> and they, do you know which player it was? I thought it might have been Calcaterra. I thought it might oh, have been well, might have gotten him back then. But I'm not positive. But he was, yeah. It, you, there was no way to tell. We, it, some of the veterans were kind of holding him back. One of the trainers was holding him back. Was, he lives life on the line. He does. And if everything's going well, it's great. You worry that one day he's going to flip, like go to the, the the wrong side, and everyone's going to have to pull him back. But 
Uh, it brings an edge to the team. It really does. They really missed that part of his game. Obviously, they missed the playmaking and, and all that, but yeah. he. But it all kind of wraps up in the one. It kind of does. Him. Yeah. There's nobody like him. No, I mean, the only other guy who's like hitting out here is Kobe Dean. Yeah. And that's all I really had today. It wasn't the, the heaviest practice. I thought, in general, the defensive line had really good reps. I saw Patrick Johnson. He beat the tight end, CJ Uzama, but got a sack. I saw BG sack in there. Uh, Jordan Davis had a good pass rush rep where he forced, he flushed uh, Hurts out of the pocket. Yeah. Any other notes you have? No, I thought it was a good, a good practice in that both sides of the ball had their moments. It was mm-hmm. good back and forth action. Uh, my stupid observation of the day was the uh, the jersey slip today. So the offense was in white and the defense was in green, which for every other practice at home, it's been reverse of that. And I'm, I'm assuming that the offense or the, de- the team is going to wear white in the game on Saturday. They do this in the regular season. The offense wears whatever jersey they're going to wear in the game. But it did throw me off a few times today. Messed up your attendance. Yeah, I mean, I, I recovered from that, but you have like double numbers when you have 90 guys on the roster. So I saw 47 in white and thought, oh, there's Smith, the linebacker, and it was Rogers, the tight end. He's huge, by the way. Rogers? Armani Rogers. Yeah, he's about the same size as Brandon Smith, who's he's, a big linebacker. He's probably bigger, yeah. I don't know. Brandon Smith is pretty big. He is big. Good stuff. Yeah, anything else there? No, it was, it was fun practice. All right, let's take There a- was a moment, I don't know, there was a moment where the uh, Beatles came on. Mm-hmm. It was it come together. Yeah. And uh, it was like the weather was nice. We were on a field where we have some room to to move around and spread out. And the Beatles were on. It was like, it doesn't get any better than this. No. It was a nice moment. Yeah. Fleeting, but nice. It was very fleeting. Let's take a break. And we have plenty more on the other side. You deserve a car that thrills you. A car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that will make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Motorano's Prime on Open Table. Before practice, we talked to Callum Moore, the offensive coordinator. After practice, talked to a bunch of players. I figured we can just kind of go back and forth, some stuff we heard. If you have one, I'll let you go first. Wasn't much from Callum uh, that really jumped out. Um, talked to, um, yeah, talked to Reed Blankenship. Um, yeah, I, I was really he he you know Sidney Jones Sidney Jones Sidney Brown <laughs> I almost did it again. Uh it's kind of become a forgotten guy around here. And he he just talked about how um how much how engaged he is. And he said that the minute he's cleared, he'll be like a hundred percent. He'll he's so locked in. Um, you know, he's a young guy and it's not easy to be hurt. It's not easy to, to miss all this time. It's not easy to not be out there. And he's out there, he's Every single snap, he's out there um, in the end zone, just kind of taking, taking. I guess they're mental reps, but he's actually going through the rep physically, um, like shadow reps, almost. Yeah, and but it was good to hear Reed just talk about how the other safeties really involve him and everything. He said he's always asking questions. He's he's as engaged as as he would be if he was practicing. Um, when when he's quizzed on something, he's got the answer right at his fingertips, and um, he's just really bullish on how he's handled the whole situation. It's not easy. I mean, it's been – oh, he got hurt at the end of last year, and it's been a long time, and I don't know when he's going to be back, but uh, it, it was good to hear Reed talk about him and just how, how close-knit they are, all the safeties, and how they all kind of uh, make sure he's okay, make sure he's, um, you know, not getting down and – um, just kind of keep him in the group and keep him involved. Yeah, you you think back to last year and how frustrating it was. We saw those like Justin Evans and Terrell Edmonds reps, where you know I'd rather see Sidney Brown get some playing time, and then eventually he does, and thought he looked all right. Yeah, yeah, there was some good and some bad, but for a young rookie, uh, it was really I thought encouraging. So uh, hopefully, 
No, I would I would think. Um, I mean, he's not going to be on the roster to start the season. Probably not at this point. Start on the pup. He'll start on the pup, and you know, and then hopefully after four weeks he can be activated. Mm -hmm. uh, I will go back to Kellen Moore. The one thing. Uh, he was asked about the blitzing from Vic Fangio, and Fangio had said that like they don't really think about the offense. What they're installing their own stuff, so it's not like the offense says, "Hey, we stunk at blitz pickup last year. Can you blitz us a bunch?" That hasn't happened, but they have blitzed a bunch. So I think that is like helping the offense in coming up with their answers and making sure they're quick to those answers. Uh, so Kellen Moore talked a little bit just how like beneficial it's been to see everything. Fangio's thrown at them. And then in general, he just said Vic's been just a really good resource for him uh, and really everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But yeah, Fangio has that in him, right? Yeah. He's He can certainly help the off. That's what he was doing a lot when he was here in 2022 was helping the offense kind of see that perspective from a defensive coordinator. So uh, I think he's been a, a big resource for everyone on that side of the football. Yeah, he's like, He's just – it's always good to have someone like him just in the organization in some role. Mm -hmm. He's just seen everything. He's done everything. He's been everywhere. Um, I, li I like those kind of guys. Um, talked to Clint Hurt for quite a while. Um, uh, defensive line, interior defensive line coach. Um, I asked him about – obviously he wasn't here last year, but he talked a lot about how far Jordan has come as far as conditioning. He said the difference is he's really embraced it. He said he he – he really knows, he said, like, he's in year three now, and he knows that to be the player, you know, he can be, which is a really good player, um, it's got to be a consistent year-long commitment to his conditioning. And he says so far he's really seen that, and he says he's come a long way with that, uh, which is you want to hear that. Obviously, he's got to do it, and he's got to stay with it. And um, the challenge isn't week one or week two, it's week 16, 17, and 18, and then hopefully the playoffs. But um, he he really likes the way he's attacked it, and you know, it's, a, it's a big part of his summer. And I think having longer practices helps, just being out there more. He said he's still, like, active at the end of practice, uh, which we've seen. Um, so that was, that was good to hear. Yeah, and we talked to Jordan Davis a little bit. I, I think it's very clear that him and Jalen Carter kind of understand the situation, that a lot of the defense falls on them. And certainly the secondary is better. That's going to help. Linebacker play should be better. That's going to help. But you're missing Fletcher Cox. As Jordan has said a bunch of times, no one's coming here to save us this year. A lot of the defense really comes down to those two and how effective they're going to be on the interior of that line. I, I think they both know it. Now, I don't know if it's great to have all that pressure on you, but uh, it, I, I kind of agree with their assessment that the defense is kind of going to go the way 98 and 90 go. Yeah, I I'm not worried about about Jalen Carter. Maybe I should be more. I I think he's going to just be a flat out superstar. Uh, I need to see it from Jordan Davis. Yeah, there are. I mean, I guess we need to see it from both. But yeah, I, I'm with you though. I I fully expect Jalen Carter to be a stud this year. Yeah, Jordan Davis. This is a big year for him in terms of proving who he is in the league. No doubt. I, he, there's a few players like that. They're kind of in a, their career go either way situation, but he might be at the top of the list in terms of like, what are you in this league? Are you going to be like a so so run defender, or do you have upside to be a elite, an elite run defender and offer something as a pass rush? Because there aren't many guys like that. Right. Uh, Clint Hurt said they, they talk about, he talks to him about BG all the time about the way his career started and. Uh, you know, it was funny to hear him say you know, he, he was a he was a big disappointment early in his career too. <laughs> so, um, for those of us who have been here and covering the team for a long time, I don't know about you. I'm a little tired of the every time there's a first round pick who doesn't right. live up the expectations. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. The Brandon Graham angle of because it all. Just because BG had a good career after being a having a disappointing season doesn't mean everyone is gonna. But he's kind of the example that everyone uses and I, I think he's a good example from his mentality and his mindset yeah uh but yeah no yeah anyway um we talked about it with nelly we talked about it with rager we talked about it with marcus smith we talked about it uh, like this is we've done this for a long Keith time buyers <laughs> michael haddock not quite mike quick uh so yeah 
that, but it was, it's always good talking to those position coaches. We don't get many opportunities. And Clint Hurt, you know, that, that even though I think they had a pretty good coach in Tracy Rocker last year, Clint Hurt's been a DC in the league. He has. He has a ton of experience. He was Seahawks DC for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting guy. Good talking to him. Big guy. Huge Milton Williams fan. And, and literally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, expects him to not be a starter, but kind of almost be a starter. No one's going to be a starter. Come on, the five man front. But as far as reps go, and I asked him about, you know, what the, what, how, what kind of reps he thinks Jordan can handle. And he didn't want to get into specifics, but that number's going to have to be a lot higher than what, what did he, what did he average last year? 27, something, 28. It's got to be a lot higher than that. Speaking of guys who have to play a lot more this year, we talked to Bryce Huff. Uh, he seemed completely on board with playing in the preseason game. He was the only presumed starter right. on the line to play in that game. And Vic Fangio was very blunt about it. He said, he's playing a new position. We need to see him do it. Uh, he said not only did Bryce Huff gain confidence from that performance, but the team gained some confidence in him. So it went both ways. And Huff seemed on board with that. He seemed on board with playing. And he, he, he thinks he needs the work too. So uh, that was good. I asked him about facing Lane every day in practice because we how many times do we come on here and say like Bryce Huff's kind of having a quiet summer but you see in 65 on like every rep I don't know what to make of it yeah. and then we go to New England and Bryce Huff and you know has a great day you know oh yeah he doesn't have to deal with Lane Johnson but he, he he seems to embrace that he's he's loved the work against Lane because as he said he, he's not like going to see many other guys better than Lane Johnson that's true that's true. It's great work. Um, that was about. We talked to Isaiah Rogers for a bit. Um, really good stuff. Talking about how he and Keeley are so close, and they're. He said we might be battling, and Q, all of them. He said we're, we're all so close. We all push each other. We all support each other. He said it's. It, it might seem like a competition, but to us, it's just we're all just getting better. And um, so that was. That's kind of unusual. It's. It's. Uh, it's good to see. Uh, Britton Covey talked for quite a while, and it's always great talking to him. Um, but I don't really have anything specific. Um, he said, <laughs> he said, he said, you could tell a cornerback AJ's running a slant and it still won't matter. He's, he'll still beat him on it. Yeah. Yeah. And what else did he see? He said, uh, oh, he's talking about Q and he said, AJ could beat him three, three snaps in a row. And then Q gets him on the fourth snap and starts trash talking. <laughs> it's, he just loves that, that personality he has. Britton Covey like commented on everybody on the team. He's so, so perceptive. Um, he talked a lot about what makes a good slot and and just the th what goes into it and um, just leverage and intelligence and just all the things that um, he feels like he's been able to bring to the table. I, I he's a very confident receiver. I mean, a very confident punt returner, but very confident receiver. Um, Is he the most liked eagle in the locker room? Could be. He's on the short list. Yeah. Him, BG, Fred, Fred Johnson. Yeah. Just very affable fellows. Yes. He's the – Brent Covey's kind of the comedic relief for the receiver. He is a little bit. Yeah. Like, AJ loves him. AJ thinks he's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, so it was uh, – I just always like talking to Britain. Mm -hmm. But that was about it. Uh, talk to Will Shipley. Yeah. A little bit. I caught the end of that. Yeah. I asked him just about getting hit hard because he gets hit hard a lot. He does. He's on the receiving end of some vicious blows. And I've noticed that like he gets up so quick after those. And he said like, yeah, I want to let them know they didn't hurt me. That's Covey's thing too. On yeah. His punt returns. Man. It's clobbered. <laughs> Covey just gets obliterated. <laughs> he called himself the human punching bag. Last yeah. Year. I, yeah. Covey more than anyone gets it, but Will Shipley on offense seems to get it quite a bit too. Yeah. But I like that mentality, like pop up. I'm fine. This is a physical game. Yeah. I, I don't mind the contact. Right. I did talk. I did ask Isaiah Rogers about my, my theory about, uh, that, that, um, Christian Ellis cheap shot up in new England at joint practice. Nah. Um, he did, he did say he kind of like each period has a certain limit of how you're supposed to hit. And he went way overboard on that. What one. was your theory? Just that, well, he waved off all the other returners on the next round. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he wanted he wanted the smoke. He want yeah. 
Um, but then then they kick the ball right to Gainwell. He goes down the right sideline and that little mini skirmish. Um, that's what I think. Um, I think CJ was in that and Gainwell, and it was the closest thing we had to a fight up there. It was DJ Jenkins? Yeah, he was in there, um, and and I say was in there as well. But yeah, he thought uh, Christian Ellis went a little overboard. We've seen that before too. No fights all of training camp. Does that change on Wednesday? No, there's been a couple where it looked like it was something was going to happen and it didn't. Um, fights are fun, but I think overall it's probably a good thing that there haven't been any. I think it shows that the team's connected. That's one of Nick's core values. But are they competing enough? Hmm. That's another core value. Oh, conflicting core values. Conflicting core values. Which one do you? I think when you go bowling with a guy Friday night, you're not going to like fight him at practice Saturday. Maybe. I don't know. Unless I, your name's Derek Barnett. I think tomorrow will be. And then a, you're going to try to fight him. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say no fights tomorrow. No fights tomorrow. Yeah. If there is a fight, can we each pick a guy? Yeah. I'll let you take your first pick. Um, I will go with. Uh, I will go with. Um, I'm gonna go with Jalex Hunt. Jalex Hunt. Yeah. Well, I hope he doesn't get in a fight. I have to talk to him tomorrow for my <laughs> my series. Oh, and you have something to talk about. Well, he might not stop if he gets in a fight. Okay. Jalex Hunt. That's he didn't take the easy ones. Yeah, I'm just, you know, rookie long camp. Okay. I mean, the obvious one is CJ. I'll leave him out there. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with Nick Gates. Nick Gates. Nick Gates. Something crazy about an offensive lineman that wears nothing on his arms. <laughs> he uh, looks like he's ready to snap. Sometimes you, you get into like a, a grizzled veteran clawing to try to stay in the NFL. An overzealous rookie does something. He's like, nope, I'm going after you. Interesting. Yeah. So if either of us get our either of our guys getting a fight we'll always what, like a lunch sure lunch at the pavilion here yeah okay. pavilion lunch it's a good deal uh i have some questions when i get to those Clint Hurd actually went to gates high school you know that i did not gates chili they won I, I just know that because gates chili won the dmr at the pen relays several years ago of course you know that uh eagle eye at nbcuni.com is the email address you can send us uh, some thoughts, comments, questions there. We have a QR code. You can also scan it with your phone and send in a question that way. Before we start with the questions, I don't know if you have a chance to read the comments on our YouTube. There's really a, a, a very active move, movement out there for you to admit you were wrong about the um, Max Hennessy thing. I already did. I did. I don't know. I'm not going to do it again. I did it already. People don't listen to the end of the podcast. That's on them. But I, I, I've i admitted fault. I've moved on. I'm living my life. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll see if that's enough. You heard you heard me say it. I don't remember any well, such that's, thing. Well, that's, that's on you too. I said it. Uh, first question here from Thomas. Hey, guys. Love the show. Can you each pick one player on both sides of the, of the ball that is surprising you at camp? I'm always intrigued with the breakout camp guys and how that translates to the season sure so we'll go offense first you pick a guy i'll pick a guy and then we'll go defense sure how about offense for you uh offense for me a guy who surprised me is uh britain covey just guys making a run at the third receiver he's never been a receiver he's an undrafted <laughs> a five eight punt returner uh so to see him mixing it up uh has has been really good to see and definitely a surprise yeah and he's a roster lock we saw right. that in the second preseason game, he got the second half off. Like, told him, you can go in street clothes and watch the second half. So he's got the team made. Uh, my guy does not have the team made. I, I actually think he's probably still a little bit of a long shot, but EJ Jenkins, the tight end, I think on merit, is the tight end three. Now, I don't even know if they'll keep three out of camp, but I've been really impressed by him. He was kind of just a name on the roster to me. He had been here a little bit last year, but he's been impressive all summer. Yeah, he has. He has. How about defense? Impressive guy in defense who surprised me. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I'll say Jalex Hunt. I'll yeah, that's fair. Say him again because I did not – I expected him, and I, I think I just wrote about this. I thought he'd be – I thought this would be a really – like a redshirt year where it was just learning and, um, you know, just buried deep, and we might not even see him get too many reps. But he's come in and looked comfortable, 
been productive. He can cover. He drops back. He's quick. Uh, you know, he's, I don't know. I guess his playing time is going to depend on a few other factors that don't involve him, but he might be in a rotation sometimes. I, I've been really impressed with him. Yeah, at For times I'm starting Houston to wonder Christian. if he's going to cut into someone else's reps. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about Houston Christian, which is one double A, whatever that is now. Um, but he only played two years as an edge there. I mean, he was at Cornell and then two years as an edge. So it's a new position. It's a new level. Um, I'm really impressed with him. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll say Nicobe Dean. Uh, sure. He's had really quiet training camps his first two years. So, uh, and and honestly, this year kind of started similarly. I, I wasn't very impressed with Nicobe the first week. No. But after that, I, I think he's been making the most plays of any linebacker. And we'll see what happens with the the starters and if he's in there. But no matter what happens with that, I, I've been thoroughly impressed by Nicobe Dean. All Same summer. here. Yeah. All right. Next question here from, I believe it's, Ibrahim, huh? uh, love your pod. Um, the regular pod covering training camp has been wonderful. Shout out to Dave. I love how you always make an effort to pronounce names properly. Smiley face. I, I think that's a little you shot. You Ibrahim's first name. Uh, I probably butchered his name, so I apologize for that. Uh, based on the O-line discussion, who would be Cam's backup, and why wouldn't it be Landon? Landon slides the center, and Steen moves in behind him. My understanding is... Uh, Landon has not taken any center reps, but if we're talking about getting the best five on the field, would Landon at center make more sense? Yeah, and again, we've talked about Stoutland doesn't like to change two positions. He can avoid it. He has done it. He has done it. I think you just want to keep Landon at left guard. I just don't want to mess with that. He's he's such a such a great player, and we probably don't talk about him enough. I don't know, we really haven't talked about him much. He's just so solid. Kind of take him for granted almost. You're not talking about the guard. He's he's doing fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's really it. And I mean, you know, we'll we'll see how it plays out with uh, Dylan McMahon. Um, I've been impressed with both those young li interior linemen. Me too. I, I think they'd be fine making Dylan McMahon their backup center. Yeah, I do too. Now, if they want some experience, I, I guess Toth, but he hasn't played. Like he has experience and practice, but he hasn't I played just, in the game. I just can't see. You it. have Nick Gates around. Like if you keep him, he could he could be that. I, you know, Matt Hennessy was supposed to be that, but that isn't. He isn't, and he's hurt now. So and he's not going to make the team. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another question here from him uh, during practice. Have you seen BG practicing inside? I feel at this point in his career, that would be the best spot. Love to hear your thoughts. On occasion. Clint Hurt talked about that actually a little bit. He said you're you're going to see him inside a lot, and and uh, somebody asked him, you know, has BG been asking you to give him more inside snaps? And he's like, he doesn't have to ask me; he's getting them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, especially in this defense with how often the edge guys are going to have to be in space a little bit in zone coverage mm -hmm. and, and backpedal. Clearly, not BG's strength at age 36. <laughs> like you see him out. Like there was one play today where. He's not really covering AJ Brown one on one, but he's lining up across from him. And I, I, forget, I whispered to someone next to me, "I was like, I don't like this for BG. <laughs> That's not great." Um, yeah. So, and that was never his. Even in the chip days, like the Billy Davis defense, that yeah. wasn't his right strength. Yeah. I like him inside, and and it gives you the option too to bump out a Jalen Carter to the edge, which we've seen at times. Sometimes they'll like have two two tackles on like the left side of the line, so you have. Tackle, tackle, edge, edge. So right. they can kind of mix and match a little bit. Somebody asked Clint Hurd about um, what made you confident Jalen Carter could could play <laughs> outside, and you know because he because he didn't really do it in college. And he said, "I can tell you didn't watch his tape." <laughs> <laughs> he kind of jumped on him because yeah. he did do some of it in, yeah. in school. You can pretty much line Jalen Carter up wherever you want. Yeah. Uh, next question here from. Um, Who's this question from? I don't have the name here, so I apologize. But anonymous question. Yeah. Um, hey guys, love the show. Simple question: How has Josh Sweat been performing in practice recently? I haven't heard much about him, and considering it's a contract year, do you expect an increase in his level of play based on how he's practicing? Yeah, um, he's another one that goes against some pretty good tackles. Yeah, well, I mean, the one day Lane didn't practice, and he saw. Uh, Fred Johnson, he, he got three sacks. sacks. So, yeah, yeah, I think that it's tough to evaluate some of the edges with the first team when they're going up against really good tackles. Yeah, 
Um, it's a big year for him, obviously. Um, He's never really had this either because he got his last, he was technically in a contract year, I guess, in uh, what was that? 21. 21. Yeah. Uh, but he got that contract in like September. Yeah, very early. So, like week two. Yeah. I, this is a real contract year for him, a chance to really make some money. And the league pretty much told you what they thought of him. Like the Eagles let everyone know he was up for a trade. They didn't trade him. And then he basically takes a pay cut to come back. Big year for him. It is. And he's still a young guy. I mean, so I mean, he's had a really, he's had an interesting career. I mean, he's never really had that one just monster, like 15 sack season. I think he's capable of it. Um, He's only been in double digits once. Yeah. 11, two years ago. 11 when everyone had 11. Uh, so interested to see how he does because, you know, they're certainly not going to keep him unless he has a really good season. I'm going to ask you this. This isn't a question from – it got, got me thinking. Where are the sacks coming from this year? You don't have Hassan Reddick. It's like – it's. I, th- I don't know if they're going to be like a 70-sack team like they were a couple years ago, but you want to at least have, what, 50 sacks? That's a good number. Um, you know, three per game is is 50, 51. Um, that's a good question. I mean, if I had to – there's nobody who you know is going to get 10. Like Bryce Huff, Bryce Huff did last year. Sweat did a couple years ago. BG did a few years ago. He's not going to um, – so they have it was actually funny there was a uh i was listening to dave spadaro interview bg at, at a practice and he said you know this is the last year right and bg goes oh yeah and dave goes what if you have 15 sacks and he goes tell howie i'm coming back <laughs> <laughs> um it's a great question i i just you know you, you hope you have like you can get like eight to twelve from from sweat from huff um, and you know, and then Carter maybe tougher inside. Carter should get. I would think he would get eight to ten. Um, he had six last year. I think he'll he'll build on that. Uh, and then Nolan Smith, can he be a six sack guy? I mean, that's kind of disappointing Big for jump. A f- first round pick. So, you get greedy. Can he be an eight to ten sack guy? He should be. Let's. I mean, we haven't seen. We haven't seen him get like a few sacks yet. No. So, I and I know. know sacks aren't the end all be all, but but over the course of a seventeen game season, it does show your pass rush. Coaches whose teams aren't getting sacks talk about how sacks aren't important, <laughs> but when they get seventy, that's all they talk about. Uh, and then you know, can Jalen Sunt be a factor? Can he get four to six? I don't know. Oh, I think that's asking a lot. That's asking a lot. Um, they're and, gonna and blitz if you're a blitz, little more. Yeah, maybe that's the thing. Like, can the linebackers? Can get, yeah, yeah. Nakobe could get three or four. Devin White's been historically a good blitzer. Minus some cap blitzes and corners. Zach Bond can blitz. He can rush the passer. So, you know, I, I don't know if they have that 13 to 15 sack guy. I think if somebody gets 13 to 15, it'll be sweat. Over Huff? Yeah, I think mo- I think he's probably – he would be my guess. Oh. But Huff's capable. Yeah, they paid him like they, they wanted him to be that. a 12 to 15 sack yeah. guy. He had 10 last year. So it's a, it's a great question. Maybe we, I, we could like kind of – maybe when we do our predictions, we can kind of go through some of that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, next question here from Trayvon. I started listening to your podcast this year while awaiting for my first term deployment into the Air Force this October. I'm from York, PA. Uh, and the one down thing about me joining the service this year is I will miss out on most of the season. So I'm trying to accumulate a lot of knowledge on the birds to account for the time I will be missing the games. Uh this is actually a question about Josh Sweat again. I just wanted to give Trayvon a little shout out. Uh, it was about Josh Sweat and, and uh, what we've seen from him in practice. But we've gotten uh, multiple questions about Sweat because it has been kind of a quiet summer. But sure. I think he's been fine. Yeah. Uh, next question here from Dave. Uh, given the propensity of the league in the past to move the best tackle to left tackle, does that allow Lane to at least enter the conversation for the greatest right tackle of all time? If it weren't for JP, he probably would have been a left tackle too. Nevertheless, his greatness and longevity at a position that used to be seemingly devalued really makes him unique. Yeah, I, I don't think there's that same. Uh, it, I mean, it used to be where the best tackle played left and the next best guy played right. I don't think that's really the case anymore. I don't. Well, yeah, it's definitely not the case. And I think guys like Lane 
started it. Yeah. It, it, remember that year it was, was it 20, or whatever it was, 17, 18, where he just said that murderer's row. And it was all those guys rush on the right side because yeah. that was traditionally where they'd find the, the weak link of the line. Right. So, I mean, yeah, he, he's spectacular. I have a list here of the right tackles in the Hall of Fame. Um, some really good ones. Uh, so, like, the best of all time. I don't know. So, the, the right tackles here listed by, this is actually relatively recent, April 19th, 2024, on Pro Football Reference, 12 best right tackles of all time. Uh, Forrest Gregg, Bob Brown, Bob St. Clair. Bob Ron, Brown, former Eagle. Mm -hmm, Ron Mix, Willie Rofe. Larry Allen, Mike McCormack uh, are the Hall of Fame right tackles. Forrest Gregg, probably the best of that bunch. It's arguable. There are some really good ones in here. So, I mean, he's in the mix, but... And some of them played multiple positions, so they weren't... Jackie only... Slater? Was Jackie Slater a right tackle? Right tackles? I don't know that answer. Of course, Mike McCormick later became head coach of the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Yes, Slater played right tackle. Rayfield Wright. It's it's it, it, I think Lane has done a lot to change the stigma. I I I don't disagree. Yeah, and it's funny how it worked out that like how many times they draft Jason Peters replacement. Yeah, they drafted Lane. They drafted Dillard. They drafted my lot. Like they just kept trying. Uh, even like our all pro voting AP all pro team. Now we vote for a left tackle and a right tackle. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Uh, last question here is from a different Dave. Um, hey, Rube, this is a question just for you. Okay. Did you ever have a Zangaro style mustache and beard? If so, picks. I don't expect you to have picks, but did you ever have facial hair? Man, I have a pick. I'll have it next <laughs> next pod. Okay, good. I look um, forward to that. What a tease at the end of this podcast. <laughs> That'll really bring up the ratings yeah. tomorrow. Um, in college, yeah, I, I uh, um, my girlfriend dumped me. I, like, I needed a major change in my life, so I grew a beard and a mustache. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the the problem was like my mustache came in blot, like really light, and my beard was really dark. What color was your hair? It was like dark brown. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um yeah, so I had that for like a few months. I, I, I have I do have photos. I will okay. Send us a photo. We'll load it in and we'll show everyone. We'll do on that. Rube YouTube. with a beard coming tomorrow. Full right beard? Here. Full beard. Wow. See it, when very I very itchy. When I first started growing facial hair, I started because I have a big scar under my chin from a childhood injury. I had stitches. From so hockey. Were you playing hockey? No, this was actually dumber. I was wrestling with uh my buddy's brother. Uh, actually at Cherokee High School, I was a kid and he was doing like wrestling moves on me, like WWE wrestling moves. And I just, my chin slammed on the cement floor. Oh. Uh, so I needed a bunch of stitches. So I still have a scar under there. And it was always annoying shaving because I would, even though it didn't hurt, I would nick it and I would start bleeding. So I was, I, as soon as I could, I grew some facial hair, but it, I didn't grow well in the beginning. So I had like a goatee, which was a weird period in my life. Mm. Uh, better now. Yeah. No, we the goatee's not allowed on Eagle Eye. Yeah, I saw that. What a tease! I can't wait to see the uh, the photo of Rube with facial hair. We'll get that uh, after Wednesday's practice. If you have a question for us, it's Eagle Eye at NBCUni.com. QR codes there, uh, and this is where I tell you guys: if you like the podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. Any final words, Rube? No, let's do it again tomorrow. Sounds good. Everyone take care. We'll be back with you very shortly.